we're talking about the debate that happened yesterday and how we feel about a sitting president that was almost, I would think, in attack mode. He really didn't let Biden say a whole lot without interrupting his conversation. What do you think? Was that a strategy or <laughs> was that just us getting a real like look a at chair, the president not... and his personality, his business tactics? What say you, anybody? Well, I think, <laughs> I think it was a performance for television. Yes. I mean, we have to remember that he is a television star. Yes, he a, is. Uh, reality show. Yeah. So I think he's always performing. He's performing. And uh, he, he gets a kick out of it, you know. <laughs> and I'm, you know, it, it was amusing. He wasn't trying to be, well, he was, he was, he did what he meant to do, which was to yes. irritate yes. his opponent. Yes. And, and get him discombobulated because every time he would disrupt, Biden would, you know, lose his train of thought. Yes. <laughs> and so, yes. So all of that was, was done intentionally. It, yes, it was I a tactic. think it was. It was a tactic. Yeah. So, so, so what, what do you what? think the tactic was employed for? Is he, you think his strategy is to just keep everybody so confused about what his platform initiatives are that they can't even think about how he has run this country over the past four years because they're so disrupted with this new virus and how he handled it. What do you think about that? I mean, you know, he says he did an excellent job with the virus. How how could he even make that statement? I mean, I I just don't understand it. Well, did you expect anything different from Dr. Trump? <laughs> well, I guess I should not have expected anything different from Dr. Trump, but I was hoping that on national TV he would be a little bit more assertive in making sure we understood what he was running for, why he thinks we should reelect him after the historical background we have with him with this disease and him knowing ahead of time and not telling anybody. I mean, was that all a part of his ploy, his strategy? For, for what? Why didn't he tell well, people? You know, you have to realize that during a debate, most people have already made up their minds. So whatever is said, people are gonna perceive their candidate as having won. So. The Trump people, they saw him as being uh, strong in his position and defending his actions. And they basically are looking at the debate as him as having won. The people who were backing Biden, they saw him as having had to deal with repeated interruptions and uh, disrespect. And they felt like he handled it as best he could. So I, I think debates don't really change any voters' minds. People just see whatever it is they already believe about the candidate. That's how come President Trump could just act out all he wanted because he the sure people did. who like that are the same yes. people who voted for him. Yeah, so, yeah. What, that's horrible. What do you say, Reven? Well, good evening, everybody. Um, good evening. How are you feeling, Reven? All right, all right. That's the same old dog, like Sister Naima said, uh, that people have made up their mind. But Trump, uh, when we say we going to elect him, we didn't elect him. No, we didn't. Black people didn't elect Trump. So, no. Trump, so this, is our, this is an illusion that Black people have, that we elected Trump. But I don't think we have that illusion. I know I didn't, I didn't vote for him. So I hope that the rest of us are at least um, <laughs> Level-headed enough to realize you didn't vote for him either. So he's not trying to convince us at all. This is my no. point. <laughs> we acting like he's trying to convince us something. But I do say this, and uh, I don't. I don't get up. Politics is who who gets what, where, when, and how. And sometimes we get emotional as as voters and uneducated voters to think that Obama should be in there. We don't ask him for nothing. Been there four years, and we don't act for nothing. And then we sit back for our tax dollars. We look insane. We just look insane. Trump, when when a politician does something that you like, you support it. If he don't, 
you protested. But he was elected by the people. One of the things they said last night, and I don't want people to misconstrue that I'm supporting Trump. I just want to lay out I'm a researcher. Said that they found no evidence that they what stole the election. They found no evidence was shown to this point that they stole the election with the Russia investigation. But I want to say this in terms of uh, accountability. Why would we, our congressmen here in Chicago, our elected officials here in Chicago, tell the president of the United States, we don't want to talk to you when we're paying federal dollars. Now we're begging for federal dollars for COVID-19. Now one of the main things that uh, State Rep. Ford shared with me when they were in, in dialogue and debate was uh, when he was talking about the COVID. Uh, the st st state of Illinois had paid no money for COVID. All of it came from federal. Uh -huh. Now federal, is, so people don't want to use that conversation by saying Trump, but they want to take, and they also remember they gave Lori a whole lot of money and she gave it to the Latinos that a lot of them that, that, that were legal citizens or whatever, they gave that uh, money that, that to them and didn't come to the community that it should be directed to. So there's a lot of misnomers, but I think that we should have got what we got from uh, 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 Trump. I think he's a businessman. He does business. But let me kind of round with this. Why would a constitutional lawyer named Barack Obama, president, and Biden leave 128 judges' seats open, leaving the White House, giving black men are incarcerated the highest level of anybody. And when you got judges, it dictates. They left, uh, last night they said they left, Trump said they left over 130, 20 some seats open. Then but do you think, no judges. do you, th I mean, didn't they tie uh, Trump, um, Barack's hands every time he tried to do anything? They stopped him. I don't, I don't go with that tie your hands. He's a constitutional lawyer. He's from Chicago. He took at least 20 people to the White House between between Rahm Emanuel, Axel Rod, Chicago, Valerie Jarrett, Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, Chicago, Ken Bennett, Chicago, Donnie Duncan, Chicago, Bill Daly, Chicago. They took all of Chicago, Danny Davis, Bobby Rush, long standing in there. And we keep saying his hands are tied. When oh, if, if his hands are tied, then how the hell is Trump doing everything he want to do, how he won't? And he, he won telling them, I'm going to grab the women in the biscuits. This is what blows my man. How, how could a man win an election? Uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, every uh, woman uh, on the planet on Earth. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, but that's uh, how you doing, brother? But I'm gonna say again, I think we should hold him accountable. We should have hold him. Now that the gig is up, Trump is gonna do what he's gonna do. But he don't care about no black vote. Now, 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 in response, any. now, response, what you just said, tie his hands up, Barack Obama can only nominate people to fill a judge office. Right. It would take the Senate to confirm that person as a judge. So when they use the statement, tie his hands up, he could have nominated 5,000 judges. But if the, if the Senate did not do their job, which they did not do their job, exactly. then no one could have been confirmed into a seat of judgeship without the Republican Senate doing anything that Barack Obama has sent to them to do. And if history serves me, because I know you the, you know, you the statistician. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the statistician. I my memory is old. I can't remember everything. But <laughs> you know, but I do recollect that there were several opportunities including the Supreme Court nominee that they refused to entertain. That's a right. That's right. Okay? That's right, Doc. So, so, you know, you can't throw, you know, Barack Obama under the bus and say he did not try to do his job exactly. that he was going to do. When he tried to do his job, they the wouldn't let him. Republican well, well, held Senate refused to accept the nomination. That's true. That's true. So my answer would, would be this. We'll leave the judgeship alone. It's called executive order. Trump you has been executive using... order a judge in the office? No, no, no I, I said that I'll leave the judgeship alone. OK, I'll OK. Move to other areas that All we right. said his hands are tied. But what they do for a president when his hands is tied, they give him executive order to go kill Momo Gaddafi and use Hillary Clinton, a white woman, to kill a black man that was friend of black people. 
a black president used a white woman to go kill Momo Gaddafi, a friend of black people. That's what went down. It's documented. And the other okay. ones, so Obama didn't have to go to the Senate when he went to assassinate them other people or have them killed. It was his executive order. When he helped the Latinos get what they got, when he helped the illegal, uh, the Im immigrants get what they got, same-sex marriage. He didn't have to get his hands tied to do any of those things went through. I'm just understanding when it comes to black people, everybody has his time. So again, we had the three strikes and you're out. Uh, 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 Biden was in there. So they passed powder cocaine versus crack cocaine. So last night is the first time I heard that that Biden's son was on cocaine coming back from military while he wrote a law to lock up all the black men and his son is doing business with 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 with, with Russia. Yeah. So now it seems like black men get a drug case, they go to jail on powder cocaine on the bill he wrote, but his son gets to do business in Russia. I'm confused on black and brown or black and whatever, black and white. But when we get a case, we, they, we go to jail and they get counseling and he went on to do business with Russia. Okay, so you talking about Biden's son and the fact that yeah, he right. didn't go to jail for, for being arrested or whatever for cocaine, right? That's what right. you're saying? I, I added when he got back. And then he moved, then all our sons get locked up. I just don't understand how we could have a black sister that they've already documented that said, I see the evidence, keep them brothers in jail. We have a white man that signs legislation that we are gonna lock up black men. They join together and we supposed to say, well, you know, they gonna change their spirit. Well, I, I, don't, I don't understand. I'm, and again, this is not defense, but I'm saying that while we're pushing all this, I want to go to when Trump signed his, uh, uh, the bill recognizing trafficking from Chicago, and we got 100 black women missing in Illinois right now. I held a meet with about 100 women with the National Black Agenda over the church on the east side and brought people to talk about it. And when Trump took the young black girl, Desiree, that was here, young girl, and brought to the White House with her mother, her son, and signed the trafficking bill, we should have, as black people, not been emotional, but say, Trump, we need the FBI to come here and find these 100 black women missing since you're going to use this black sister's approach to child. And when Trump signed the, the bill to recognize slavery in America was unjust, he signed the bill. It gave us legal conversation about reparations. So to this day, most people don't know he signed the bill. And then he gave out $20,000 to, for people to recognize the commemoration of the situation. We didn't even have a conversation on that. And then he, he, he pardons Jack Johnson, who was with a white woman, which would make all white men should hate him. He pardoned a black man with a white woman when we say that white men hate black men being with white women, and he pardoned the guy. So I'm not saying I'm cheering for him, but when he does something for black people, we said to don't use it to get our money, the, the opportunity zone. It's like TIF money being stolen in Chicago. The Opportunity Zone money is given to disadvantaged black community for us to fill out our paperwork, dot our I's, cross our T's, and rebuild our community without dealing with the city of Chicago TIF money that sent a billion dollars up to Lincoln Yard, and the mayor signed that, but didn't give us $270 million to go between 10 black communities. So I just want to talk, as my brother said, I want to talk numbers. I don't want to get emotionally, but when the brother, when, 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 when Trump is doing something with our money that we supposed to get, we don't ask for it. Obama do eight years, we don't ask him for anything. And now we're sitting there saying, we got to get go after Trump. America ain't just got racist. It's been, when Obama was in office, all the people got shot by the police around this country was mostly black people getting shot at racist. When Obama That's on his watch. That's true. Uh, okay. uh, I can't breathe. Trayvon Martin, Rakia Boyd, my niece, we can go through the whole game. All the people, 16, everybody under this brother's watch was getting killed in racism. They drugged the brother from Texas. Had a, he, he went out with the white guy, they drug him behind his truck, snatched his head off. You're right, so you're I don't right, think you're right. Is, okay, I think social media has changed the game, but when did America get more racist? When now, well, and I'm, I'm, I'm emotional about this because when Emmett Till, the white woman that killed Emmett Till, said that I lied. I ain't seen no black people saying she should take her behind the jail. She lied, she should be in prison. Mommy Till, who's my good friend, like a mother who I should talk to three times a week and talk to her the night before she died with no justice. When these people, when that white woman said that they lied and killed her son, every black civil rights group, every black lawyers group, every mother, son and child and mother and sister should have said lock her behind her. They're right. not mad at that, but they're mad at Trump. Yeah. All right. All right. What say you, Chris? 
Oh man, that was very passionate. Uh, first of all, thank you, Wanda. And sure. also uh, hello to you and your esteemed panel. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you um, for being here. Thank you so much. Um, what I watched last night was not a debate. It was a debacle. <laughs> and it was one of the most shameful things I ever seen in my entire life as a broadcaster and a media personality. I was like, you got to be kidding me. But we all knew who they were going into it. If you've done your research and done the yep. following of both men, you know what you're going to get. And uh, so, someone like Trump, who is devoid of human emotion, who is devoid of any type of comporting themselves president-like, he has no idea what it means right to this day. Uh, I call him the so-called president because he does not know what he's doing and continues to be in the dark because he cannot comprehend a basic question. We've seen that from day one. Everything he does is personal. Or some people say, oh, don't take it personally, just business. That's a lie. Everything you do is personal. Let's go back uh, three years ago, about three and a half years ago, when he has the uh, press core around him and he points to CNN's Jim Acosta and says fake news. Now, why of all of the correspondents, he points to him? Why? CNN is now ran by a guy named Jeff Zucker. Jeff Zucker was also the programmer in charge of NBC when he was over there doing The Apprentice being a fake millionaire. And so he's attacking the person who is now in charge of CNN. The reason we went to football, they should be fired. They should be fired because he tried to buy the Buffalo Bills and failed the NFL team. If you connect the dots, everything he says is personal. And the one thing that stood out during the so-called debacle, really, really was debacle, not debate, uh, what I was watching is the obvious. The dog whistle to the fact that he would not denounce white supremacy. Now, I go along with Reeven, yes, it's being here since the beginning of time of racism, but if, he, if you didn't know he was racist, last night he showed you his your orange yes and yes. said, yes, <laughs> this is who I am. I'm taking out dog whistles. I'm taking up notices because if anything happens this election and I'm not reelected, I want to put everybody on notice to go create havoc and violence in various communities, especially people of color. In yes. Community. The, yes. Uh, the group that he was referring to, the uh, Proud Boys, an organization ran by neo-fascists, all male, who go after anybody from violence from a so-called political standpoint. And then on their uh, social media, they said, we're going to stand by and stand down, sir. It was acknowledgement of who they are and what they are. When wow. you send that type of message out, they embraced it. They're already making t-shirts. Go to Amazon.com and see it for your damn self. I'm telling you, it's, no, it's more than a notion. You have to understand that racism is alive and well. When we have people like that, it's not good for everybody. He doesn't care about his own people. We already yeah. talked about Bob Woodward. You know, the 18-hour the interviews he done with him on this tape, when he told Woodward, well, I don't want to tell anybody. I'm going to, you know, throw everybody to panic. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And still they acknowledge the fact that uh, under his watch of COVID-19, over 204,000 people have died. Yes. And continue yes. to pass away. So yes. the man is out to lunch. He never going to come back. It, it's a matter of taking uh, some sort of action to vote. If you know somebody who don't vote, get up, kick them, put them in a headlock, a figure for a leg lock, make sure they go out and vote. This is critical. Well, you know, I, I want the audience to realize that, and I know they probably do, that, you know, we don't elect the president. That's the electoral college. So now have your question, who are the members of the electoral college? And do you think that they're going to vote the way we want them to vote? They haven't in the past. No, no. no. So, no, they, you know, what, what's up with that? What are, what are we going to do about that? Well, you got to make your voice heard. You've got to make your voice heard. And you can't wait till they get to the top. you got to get it from the, mm -hmm. from the bottom and work your way up. If you want change, you got to be at the table. In order to be at the table, you got to be at the and, and right now, for close by, you got to vote and vote early and vote often. 
<laughs> and already said you can vote yep. early and vote often because whatever vote comes through the first vote that comes through they'll record it anything else will get tossed out okay, okay. there's going to be a lot of challenges on vote day i hear so many people say they're going to wait until the day of voting to go and stand in that line it is going to be so many challenges yes on that day do not wait to that day they're going to be uh challenges with the machines there's going to be challenges with uh confusion on who should and who should not there there's going to be uh agitators at, at the door so vote early don't yeah. wait i got I my to... stuff in the mail yesterday what you say name the... <laughs> go ahead well i would definitely suggest that you do early voting uh the mail-in ballot that situation you know it's it's and i'm constantly getting encouragement to sign up for a mail-in ballot but we know there's so much question about what can happen with a ballot when it's mailed i mean the, the post office is halfway about delivering regular mail so right <laughs> I personally wouldn't rely on that, but I would say definitely go for early voting. Early voting has started, and in Chicago, I believe it, it's uh, was it on the on the second of October or, or the fifth of October? I know it's, I it's yeah, the sixth. The sixth. Yeah. Okay. The sixth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would say. And uh, early voting locations have changed. So if you yeah, are look up your local Chicago, location, you have to look up where your location is because yeah. they have changed. They, okay, they Reven, so, what did you yeah. say, Reven? You were saying something about um, you were about to say something. Yeah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Oh no! Hey man, you gotta bring your picture up, brother. You can't be talking in the dark. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, well, and, you know and center yourself so we can see your own face. <laughs> oh lord. Okay. I just hate to be the bearer of bad news. And Sister Naima can contest to this. We had a candidate that we worked for during the mayor's election. And the mayor election in Chicago, well, first of all, in order to be elected, you have to come through Chicago. Chicago is the number one place where you have to be validated to become a president, usually. As Brother Mayor Daly, dad said, the father said, um, uh, are you going to run for president? He said, I don't run for president, I make them. In Chicago, ah. President made, and so uh, the Democratic Party base here is a place you have to come through Illinois. With that being said, we were in a life and death situation with a mayor's election, and Sister Naima and I supported a candidate, and it was a life and death situation. We had all kind of blacks in the in the race, and a lot of people that have been longstanding, and had the lowest turnout in the history of wow. black people. In Illinois, with the NAACP, with Urban League, Operation Push, and with all the organizations, grassroots organizations here to get out the vote, and we did not get a turnout. And they and Lori Lightfoot, them people voted their interest and put the North Side community and the rest of them in. That's not an anti nobody statement. That's you vote your interest. <laughs> then turn around. We got a life and death, and I'm using life and death. We had four years of Bruce Runner, and. Um, runner and uh uh we they drain all the non-for-profit organizations they put black women and child cares out they had social service mental health is why we having this killing four years uh shut down business mental health teen pregnancy i used to be a case manager then you shut that down and so we have the the we have an election on our on our on our deathbed and for the governor for the state of illinois after four years of republican we have the lowest turnout in the history of black people again so I'm not going to get carbon illusion. So everybody in Chicago that's hollering Trump, get rid of 45, y'all ain't registered. And then for the last five months that I've been here on the ground, I'm a grassroots organizer moving around. They ain't been talking about nothing but a damn census for the bunch of people that sometimes don't have no damn census. So what I'm saying to you is, while we talking 45, 
people are not registered. There's not been a campaign to get people out to vote that we can physically see. I'm with Ray Ray Junebug, the crackhead, and all the people in the community walking around. They're lost in dissolution after COVID-19 stress, PTSD, and Big Mama scared to come out the house on COVID-19. And we have not have, we keep talking census. We have not talked about voters' education, voters' registration, and get out to vote to the community. I was the number one advocate when the governor ran to get out the vote and call soul to the polls. We ran that. So I'm saying to you, why everybody in Chicago is speaking to the black community and black organizations, why we keep saying 45, the reason why 45 disrespects Chicago, because we have not come out in two major elections to save our lives. All right. All right. Dr. Ford, I know you got a follow up. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, um, I, I agree. The numbers don't lie. You know, the turnouts are low, people are discouraged, people are not, you know, trying to participate in something that they don't believe in, uh, whether it be the census or the election. You know, um, I know we don't matter. You know, uh, I, I was listening to the debate uh, or debacle, as Chris would say. Um, and, and, you know, one of the questions that they asked him was about people dying at his events. And he boldly said, yes, he nobody, <laughs> nobody has ever died at any of my rallies. Nobody. So, uh, you know, if you evaluate that statement, you understand that, you know, Herman Cain died. Yes. Okay. You know, as, you know, being at that Oklahoma City rally. But he was not at the rally when he died. No, he wasn't <laughs> at the rally, but he got COVID-19 at the rally. But the statement was, nobody has died at my event. Okay. He 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 challenge, he, he works on trickery. Uh huh. And and you. <laughs> well, you know, in his mind, Herman Cain, being a black person, you know, um, <laughs> you know, don't count anyway. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. So he's right what he said. You know, nobody. Nobody. Yep. Yeah. You know, Herman Cain is a nobody to him. Yeah. Okay. That's even though he's black, even though he black, caught COVID and died, he's a nobody. Yeah. Okay. He didn't say the same thing about McCain. He ain't no hero. Heroes don't get caught. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. What do you think about him saying talking about the taxes? Remember, did y'all y'all heard him talk about how? He was so smart because he was able to avoid paying taxes like everybody well, else. He said, that, he said that before he got elected. I know, mm -hmm. and but, but he came in office. didn't nobody didn't nobody arrest him for tax evasion? No, and they still haven't, and they probably won't because what's going to happen is, and in week two before he's going to resign, put the VP in, and then the VP will exonerate him. <laughs> They got it all figured out. They got it all planned. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I want to throw this idea at Reeves since he's the, you know, the the street person. You know, no no disrespect, Naeem, because I know you're a street, you know, advocate too. But I know Reeves better than I know you, so I can pick on him. You know, since since we got an election coming up, you know, I will make a contribution towards loose squares if you guarantee to take the brothers to the polls. Okay, you know, you know. Can, can can we get something like that going, brother? Yeah, we got a meet come up, rock the vote. I'll follow up with you on that. So I've been working with some young people to uh, to organize because, like you said, I don't want to sit by. As you know, brother, Dr. Ron, uh, when I saw that the young people wasn't registering to vote when they was beating the millennials up, and Sister Naima knows it, I, I refuse to let the elders beat up the young people because I know since I've been in, you know, in, in order to get elected, you get, get elected. Uh, when I grew up, they bought you half a pint to go vote. They bought you some drugs to go vote. They paid the pastor for you to go hey, vote. They paid the politicians to get some votes. They paid the businessmen to get votes. So they paid everybody to go to vote. They got a busload of homeless people, gave them a joint, gave them some weed, <laughs> gave them some water, <laughs> cocaine. They gave them loose squares and got them to vote. So when they said the millennials weren't coming out to vote, I knew that they didn't want to pay the young people. The young people ain't like we were. They got cell phone bills. They got children. They got rent. So to ask young people to come out and, and volunteer to vote 
when you're paying all the head, the gang cheese or street organizations, I know that's how it goes. You put money on the street. And speaking of putting money on the street, Biden and them campaign has not put any money on the street to our people. When every right. election, we are Democrat, Republican, you eat before Thanksgiving, before Thanksgiving. Sorry, my <laughs> Indian brother. Before and then uh, and before Christmas, so we at least guarantee some brothers don't have to break in your house and bust you in your head because he got a little money for the for the election to keep out your house. So they didn't put no money in the street. So I was an organization Dang. with a young sister named Chantel Grant, and we started Level Up and Vote is to get young people engaged, and we had them on on uh, Mark Wallace show every Thursday night. I gave him a voice. I was out loud to give him a platform. Mark Wallace did a great job so we can get him engaged. So I'm working with another group now called Rock the Vote and um, uh, Sister uh, Victoria over there at ABJ. She's organizing a group of young people to get out to vote with Minister Satch Preacher and the uh, Mr. Rahim Akin, uh, Atan with the Temple of Mercies and those guys. So uh, we are doing that, Dr. Ryan. I'll give you more, but I'm saying to you, they're not targeting they want us to volunteer to come out to vote, man. We And that sister Naima know, when we worked for State Rep Ford, we didn't have a lot. Of, we almost paid to run it. We paid to be in his campaign. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we had little money. But I'm saying we cannot afford to ask young people to come out and work for free like we did younger time. Food is high. They got cell phone bills. We gave them all kinds of luxury. And then tell them, come out and volunteer. I think it's not fair. But I think to, in, in, in the sense of we should have had a campaign. I think Obama could have done real well after he left the the brother who died, uh, 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 our brother uh, from Edmonds Petty Bridge. Uh, what's our good brother's name who passed uh, recently? Representative uh, John Lewis. Yeah, John brother, Lewis. And, 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 and all respect to him. He could have came back home. He has Chance the Rapper. He's been using Chance the Rapper them for all kinds of stuff. Chance the Rapper, let us vote registration. Come back here and have him do a concert or do whatever, a live stream to get out the vote campaign and don't have to do Democrat, Republican, just, just do it. He has the money. The Obama Library Foundation has the money. Obama has the money. His wife has the money. So I think it's an intentional effort not to get young people engaged in the process, but I don't, I don't think that's good. But also at the same time, if somebody can help me, I know I'm jumping around. Am I mistaken that they said that Mr. Yeah, Biden here. was Hold a on. speaker at a Ku Klux Klan he event, doing he was like in this because I can't get you. On a Ku Klux Klan, is that, is that what they're telling me that took place? Yeah, I sent and you his link. A lot of no, his I'm personal. Saying, you know, I'm asking you to let me. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Reven. No, I was just asking the question. Am I mistaken that somebody told me that Mr. Biden was at a Ku Klux Klan event? and he was praising the Ku Klux Klan. I know we were talking about Trump being racist, but they tell me a lot of elected officials that when he was there 40 some years, most of his friends were a lot of, had okay. a lot of racist be, uh, beliefs and a lot of elected officials in the Senate with personal friends here. Did Dr. Ryan and maybe you and my brother could maybe help me with that. That's what I heard last night from a few people that he was there praising the Ku Klux Klan at an event. Mm. Is that I true? never heard that one. That's that's not one I heard about, um, you know, Biden, you know, uh, I, I, let me ask this question. OK, um, I, I think that between the two candidates that we have on the ballot for president, you know, neither one of them are perfect by far. Mm -hmm. OK, but we only got two choices. OK. And I heard somebody say on the radio that, that they were going to take uh, their vote and do a write-in for, um, you know, uh, uh, what's that idiot, the bipolar dude that say he's going to be president? Um, uh, yeah, Kanye West? Yeah, James. <laughs> yeah, Kanye West. Yeah. You know, so I think, you know, that uh, we don't have any horse in the race that we can be proud of. Okay, I mean, let's just be, you know, keeping it real, you know, and and uh, if we decide to as a group to say, okay, you know, um, okay, Biden is not worthy, and if Trump is not worthy, we see the chaos that Trump has created in the three and a half years that he's been in office. Okay, he has brought us on the brink of uh, civil war, okay? 
You know, he has, um, you know, he has no problem, you know, taking credit for doing more for black people than anybody else that's been president except Lincoln. Okay. Now those are his words. Okay. Now Biden, you know, being the vice president, uh, he knows the job. He respects the government. Okay. You know, he respects the system to the point where he can't do any more damage than what's already been done. So I'm kind of saying we, we don't have a whole lot of choices here. I think that if we as a race, you know, change the Senate, you know, vote for people that will be in our favor on the Senate level. Now we got some people that can work with uh, whoever, you know, our president of choice is going to be. Then we got an opportunity to try to survive this thing and maybe get some things done in our favor. And I use the word maybe because they ain't got to do nothing for us, you know, and, and, and I, I look at when um, Bloomberg was running for you know the nomination bloomberg put out the statement that i recognize that the black community needs uh, billions of dollars worth of uh relief and i'm gonna see that it happens and then he lost on super tuesday and we ain't heard no more about that relief okay no more okay so you know they know how to put trigger words in our direction to say, okay, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna stir up some folks to try and get them in our favor. But when they're not in the race no more, we don't hear no more about that. Okay. So we have to decide on a local level where we can make the most impact. Because like Wanda said earlier, this the electoral college. Yeah. You know, that determines who's gonna walk walk back into the White House. And we have to make some decisions on a local level to, to, to determine who we're going to send to Washington to be effective for what we need. Okay. Cause we need somebody to stand up for us in a whole lot of ways. Okay. You know, so um, we got to start somewhere, you know, we got to start with what we can do versus what we can't do. Right. That makes yeah. sense to me. And I, I agree to the fullest that we got to start somewhere, but our people are not registered in Illinois. They're not, black people are not registered across every major state. We're not in the numbers. But I do know in Chicago, where I grew up, a Democratic state, at one point we had Emil Jones and we had the whole state of Democrats. And since I've been here, we lost all the housing projects. We lost all our black gay station. We only have one on 159th Street, 50, 100 something in, in Phoenix, Illinois. We've lost all our black banks other than one. We've lost all our black grocery stores. Chatham Foods is sitting there empty right now on the corner. We lost South Sheen, John H. Johnson, and WVON just sold the building, or gave the building that we got back that was a historical place and moved further downtown. So I'm just saying in Chicago, I don't want us to be naive. We have, we have the largest amount of elect officials in the United States of America. We have 89 in Illinois, Mr. Ms. Wanda. We have 89 black elect officials. And Bobby Rush um, um, left 79th in, in Chatham and moved out to 119th in Ashland into the Irish community and then turned around and endorsed Daly with all black candidates from there on the, on the roster. Wow. And we do know that Mayor Daly history with the Black Panther Party and, and the whole nine has been a bad history. So I'm just saying, and, and Dan, Congressman Danny Davis just announced, again, I'm just talking science. I don't want people to take it personal about the people I'm talking about, but I'm old enough to understand science. Congressman Danny Davis and, and Eddie Reed just announced last week in the Chicago where it's been Democrats most of the time. I've been here in my life other than the last four times or whatever, but we've been here strong, uh, that, um, that we're right now still not getting children graduating. They're not even getting the apprenticeship program. Now, we, we had Simeon, we had Western House, we had Chicago Vocational, we had Dunbar Vocational. And right now we're back to ground zero starting for our first grad grocery store, our second gas station if we get one, a new bank if we find one, and a hundred some schools being closed, and all the CHA housing projects being moved like Katrina with no water. 
I'm saying we like the children of Israel now. And so I think God sent Trump, I think he sent Bruce Runner to tell black people quit dealing with lesser two evils and deal with God. Ooh, now, now that's a message. What say you, Naima? Okay, she can't hear me. Hold on a second. Okay, Dr. Ford. Yeah, I can hear you now. I, I was on mute. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I think one of the things that's kind of critical is to look at all of the pros and cons that are going to come up and realize that there are some issues that people are going to have with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And I mean, we are kind of down to the lesser of two evils kind of situation. If that, if, if, if people are really feeling that they're not motivated uh, by the Democratic Party, then we have to come up with some reasons to motivate people to get to the polls. Um, res resenting the current president isn't going to be enough for some people who just feel like it doesn't matter. Whoever's in there, is not, it, nothing will change. And that's the reason for a low voter turnout. So you have to give people a vision of what's going to happen. We have to have, we have, to have a plan and agenda for afterwards, really regardless of who gets in and also realizing it's not just the president in this election. Right. It's all the local yeah. offices. And that's what has to be the driving force. Who, who, who are your local elected officials that you need right. to make sure you get in? That's what's got to drive people to the polls. Um, and they have to have in mind maybe even legislation that's on the ballot that's that, that they need to be voting for but they need a greater reason because i mean i after looking at the debate i <laughs> i wasn't extremely impressed with either person because i felt that they there was more performance than substance and we we want young people to think in terms of preparing themselves for leadership and to at some point take over their local governments. So we need to give them a greater vision of why they're voting, why they're getting involved in the process and what they intend to do once they are in positions of leadership. And we do have some, some young people who have run and won. So that has to be a, a greater motivating factor for getting them to register, to vote, and to participate. They gotta, they gotta look beyond the next four years to what are you gonna do when you become an alderman, when you become a state legislator, when you become a, a, a Congress representative. And so start now getting involved because you are going to be in a leadership position. That's, that's the vision we have to give them. That has to be the motivation that makes them get to the polls. What about you, Chris? What you say about that? Oh uh, well, the ducktail what uh, Naima just talked about. I remember reading um, a very great article years ago from the late great actor Ozzy Davis. So Ozzy Davis would have these meetings with, of course, his wife Ruby D, uh, Malcolm X, Lorraine Hansberry, James Baldwin, uh, people of different walks of life, and they would have it at his house and just have these great meetings about what it can do to help the race. We need that type of format now more than ever. We need to be pro our own in any time in history is right now. Uh, going back to what Naima said about investment into young people. If yes. you go back and look at your history, uh, mostly not all movements are galvanized by the youth. Whether the civil rights movement here in America, yes. or overseas in um, South Africa, you know, with yeah. Nelson Mandela. You need the gyros, you know, need not the, not the sandwich, but you need the gyros and the sisters and brothers who've been around walking the earth a little bit longer to help guide the youth, to yeah. give them guidance. And we all have to work together. I know it's a little bit easier than it sounds, but it can happen. We are a great people. Yes. Our history shows us so. But if you don't know your history, you're walking around not knowing. You're right. almost a walking, you're almost a walking dead. Mm -hmm. from that perspective, because your soul has not been fed. When yeah. you are a younger person, you have to come to the elders with your cup empty, and you have to ask the elders to fill it. Yes. It has to be 
uh, a definite understanding that I'm passing on information and knowledge to you so that one day when you become your own person, when one day when you have your own businesses, when one day when you might even go into a type of faith situation, will yeah. you be ready? It will really you be ready, ready to heed the call? Exactly. Okay. So All we right. need to really embrace ourselves because this the time is now. What we have gone through, we've seen with COVID-19, the murder of George Floyd, it has been the reset, as I call it. The reset is what we need to define how we can move forward and how we're moving forward. Um, right, the debacle last night should give us a more of a wake-up call. Yes. That we need to turn turn ourselves inward and say, what can we do for us? That's exactly right. I agree. And are we prepared? Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Okay, well, the floor is open because we have about uh, 11 minutes left. Um, I want everybody to have a chance to make sure that our listening audience and our viewing audience understands your position on what happened with that debate last night. And as you just said, Chris, we need to start preparing ourselves for whatever happens. You know, we we have to deal with whoever the next president is. So we need to start training our young people, just like Naima said, to make sure that they understand the role they're going to be playing in the near future. They are our future presidents, senators, congressmen, as Naima said, so we need to prepare them because this game is not going to end anytime soon. This is the big boy network that I think is I think is the same network with two sides. They and they act they act like they're against one another, but really I don't know that that's true. <laughs> what say you, Dr. Ford? What do you think? Well, you know, I, I echo um, what everybody has said. We have to plan for the future, you know, whatever that may look like and who is willing to uh, go forward and that we can embrace and put under our wings in order to give them what we have to offer that can help them make a difference. So, so um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not, it, not going to be pretty. No, nope. okay. it's, it's not, not going to be pretty, pretty. You know, and, and it hasn't been, you know, um, you know, if we use what has happened, uh, fast forwarding to now from, say, the 50s and 60s, you know, we look at the fact that now we can sit in the same restaurant, you know, and eat without having to sit in the color section, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> we, can, we can go to bathrooms that are not marked colored. Okay, right. you know, because what has happened in the work that they put in back then. Right. Okay, so, you know, now we're at the threshold of uh, some things that can happen if they stay the course. If they stay, they the, course. stay the course. Right, you know, right, They right. cannot get sidetracked. They can't be bought off. They can't take no government cheese, you know, they can't, you know, they can't, they can't take the peace offerings that they're going to throw at us to, to mellow the young people down. Right. You know, because it's coming. They're going to offer them something. Of you know? course. Of course. You know, because that's what they do. Well, you know, uh, and that's part of the process. You know, we can get them to shut up and be quiet long enough. We can keep on doing what we've been doing. <laughs> which is you know don't don't let us uh don't let them see you stick their hand in your pocket right. Okay? right i look at the fact that you know um even with this covert 19 that's going on um the big deal was to get the folks back coming in spending money at their businesses so their businesses don't have to close up right yeah that was the okay. big thing well, who 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 is the biggest consumers on the planet? Uh, we are okay. You know we the biggest consumers on the planet. Yeah. So you know we be impressed to get back out there and spend our money. Yes, okay? we are. Okay. You know get out there, keep them businesses open. They need your money. Yes. Okay. Uh, been in business for fifty years and 
And and you know, if y'all stop coming, then we're gonna have to close down. <laughs> you know, and, and that was all they were concerned about was you know separating us, the consumers, from our money. Right. That's so true. So, so true. So we have to, you know, uh educate the generation of, of freedom fighters or whatever we even want to call them, you know, um to understand the tactics that are coming at them that's going to make them weak and vulnerable and not be able to stay the course to be able to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. And, you know, and, and, and as everybody knows, I'm all in. I'm trying to tell people the truth every day. You know, hey, I don't speak hey. day trying to tell them the truth. You know, I try to make them aware of what's going on all the time, you know, and, um, you know, and that's all that we can do. Is that's all we can do. That's all we can do. Available for them so that they can take advantage of it and use it to be able to go to the next level. Oh, he dropped off, but I want to say something. Uh, I heard something the other day. Okay. That really uh, struck me where the some of the youth did not believe the Holocaust happened. Mm. And I started thinking, I said, if they don't believe the Holocaust happened, which was more recent than the slavery, uh -huh. and the challenges that we went through right where where are our children where are where we have a platform now where we can educate on our own level if we just reach out to these children and talk to them in a method or educate them in a method that they will understand that yes. they will gravitate to them whatever yes. it is yeah uh, this is something that we have to work on and like you all have said, it doesn't matter who's going to be in the top office. Yes. We have to focus on the immediate. And That's right. You know, when I was in the school districts uh, with my own children, the PTA, I said, you are treating the children as if they're just commodities. They're the ones that's going to be pushing us around. Yes. When, it's time, when we're tired, when we're done. What are we doing to help navigate them through and be able to speak with their voice yes. in a productive way? You're so, right. We, we have to teach them. Have to do, yes. We have to teach them. We Don't have to teach them. And be patient with them. That's right. Patient, yeah, they knuckleheads. We were knuckleheads. That's right. Okay. That's right. We, we wasn't always at this level. That's right. That's <laughs> that right. So, so right. be patient with them, but be firm right. and open their eyes to what's going on, what the possibilities are. They're right. kings and queens. They're rulers. They're right. leaders. But uh, an effective leader has to be a good listener. That's true. I like that in you. You're absolutely, absolutely correct. Yes. The, the floor is open. We have like minutes. You so, know, Wanda. Yes. I think this is a, a really great time for us to start to establish some independent things. We see what's happening with the whole situation with the COVID-19 restrictions. We have all kinds of opportunities to, to uh, increase our proficiency in our online businesses. Yes. Uh, create our online homeschooling programs. Yes. Uh, do all the things that would actually enhance our communities because the reality is everybody's on the same playing field now everybody. that's right that's so right we really can take this time to excel and we can also show our young people how valuable they are a lot of them who are computer savvy they've mastered all of the social media systems yeah we really need to be paying more attention to our own media, our own voices. And you've been saying this yes. for years, Wanda. You know, yes. we, we need to be building our own media networks. Yes. Now's the time to do it. Because everybody, Oprah and everybody else is sitting in front of their home computer. That's right. Their audience. So That's everybody's right. on the same playing field. So we can make our media voices just as loud as theirs. And we can That's be right. defining the news. And we can be putting our spin on news just like we're doing right now. That's right. That's Analyzing right. Analyzing the debate we can be doing this every event we, we should have this conversation we should and we can define 
how people should see things and, and, and what the spin is going to be on the news. So we got the power in our hands right now. That's right. I agree and with we you. We can Naeem. include our young people because That's right. they, for, for those of us that might not be as computer savvy, they can help in that process. And so That's right. We can really show them how valuable they are with the skills That's they right. have. Now's the time to do it. That's right. I agree. Everybody agree. We need to do this on a frequent basis. Ladies and gentlemen, we yeah. need to make sure that we let our young people know they are the number one commodity for us. We need to teach them and train them so that they can step up to the plate because by in 20 years, Social Security won't be here. They they don't they're gonna drain all that money and we're gonna be sitting around trying to figure out which way is up. It'd be nice to have your young people there to help, right? It'd be nice to have your young people there to depend on. So we have to train them to be reliable and accountable and Remember that we, our lives are valuable too. So they need to stop the killing. And whatever we can do to help them see that, that's what we need to do. The floor is open, we got three minutes. Anybody, what say you? I would just like to share, she mentioned in terms of the Holocaust, uh, to my knowledge, no disrespect to any Jewish community, the Jewish Holocaust might've happened four years maybe outside of America not on America's soil, 400 years of uh, slavery here in America with laws castrating and raping and murdering our families. And um, they're getting reparations and we're not. Yes. Um, in Chicago, there's a Black History Bill written by my good friend, Brother Mello Sam in 1991, passed by the Shaw brothers, uh, Senator Shaw. And right now, State Rep Ford has got a national movement of a million something hits saying, if you're not going to put civic history in to teach black people history right, yet you lied about the women, you lied about the Indian, you lied about the Chinese, it's a lie. That's right. So it's you a lie. must discontinue the book. He's getting global attention. But what really hurts me is a law to be on the books with every national organization, every national leader here in Chicago, all the parents and grandparents from down south, Mississippi, and local, and all the first black president, first black mayor, first black senator. We have a law on the book to teach black history throughout the state of Illinois to white and blacks. And we have not enforced our children for young girls to be queens and put their dress on right and young boys to be kings and pull their pants up right. So we we need to apologize to black children for neglecting to give them. We stand to be the only race of people in the history to leave our children bills and bills and more bills. Oh, brother, that is really, really, really a tantalizing statement you just made you're right we do have to learn to leave the legacy that our children can follow with pride because we have done a lot in our lives and they yes. need to know what that is so yes, yes it's time for us to start telling our stories so that our children grow up knowing who we were and the contributions we made to this society and to this world. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank each of you for joining me for this broadcast. And I will be doing this on a weekly basis and maybe even more often if you all decide to work with me to share the information. Thank you so much, everybody. I really enjoyed your participation. Thank you. Have a great evening, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.